Hello again and welcome to our discussion on maximum power transfer in AC or sinusoidal circuits. We saw in some earlier discussion about how to compute the maximum power absorbed by a resistor and that was for the case of DC circuits, but now we're going to look at the maximum real power or average power in an AC sinusoidal circuit. We saw that real power, average power involves the voltage, the current, and also theta and phi the phase angles of the voltage and the current. So there's an interaction there that we have to account for that we didn't know about in our earlier discussion in DC. So let's just kind of set up the problem immediately. So here we have a case of a Thevenin equivalent circuit in the box and, and this is not this is a, a generic solution but it's it's applicable because Thevenin said that any linear system can be represented in this way. So if we have a system of volt, sinusoidal voltage sources and impedances, there exists a sinusoidal source VTH in series with an impedance ZTH which will act equivalently. So here we have a load, so what's in the yellow box we can't change, but there's a load impedance Z sub L that we can change. And so the question here is how do I choose this value of ZTH such that the average power, the real power in this load is maximize what value of Z sub L and X sub L should we choose? Well remember Z sub L is composed of a resistance and a reactance and so the question here is really what you know it, Z sub L is composed of two parts so I'm looking for this number and this number that simul when chosen together will maximize the average power. So let's get started. How do we find this sort of thing? Well we need to figure out what the average power in the load is. And so the average power in our load is the average power, the, the real power, is the real part of the complex power. So in our load here, in the load there is a complex power. It's going to be V load I load conjugate. So there is a current that flows in the circuit I and there's a voltage phasor here called V load. And so if I find V load, if I find the voltage across my load and I find the current flowing through my load and conjugate it, that will be the complex power in my load. But I'm looking to maximize the real power and that's simply going to be the real part of the complex power because if you recall from my earlier discussions that this is really a real power plus some reactive power. So if I take the real part of the complex power that will be the value I'm looking for. What is V sub L? Well V sub L is simply going to be the current times impedance using Ohm's law. And I, I conjugate is actually the magnitude of I squared. And how do we find I? Well, I is going to be VTH over ZTH plus ZL. So if I'm looking for I squared, I quantity squared, then this is I squared times Z. And if I take the real part of that, this expression is the average power. Well, recall that Z sub L is actually a resistance and a reactance. Furthermore, the impedance is also composed of a resistance and a reactance. And so taking these two relationships and plugging them into this equation, we will get this bottom equation and this is the expression for the real power, the average power in my load. Now what happened to the real part, let me explain that quickly, is that we're looking for the real part of this. Well remember Z sub L is composed of R sub L plus J reactants sub L. Well the real part of the complex power, the real part of the complex power is due to the resistance 
in the impedance Z sub L. So if I'm looking for the real part of the complex power, the real part of the complex power is due to the power being absorbed by the resistance. And so we can take the real part away because we're only considering the resistance part of R sub L now. So this expression at the bottom is, is the expression we're looking for. This is the value of the real power in the load R sub L. And I'm looking to maximize this real power. And so how do you maximize the real power? Or you differentiate the quantity. So we're going to want to differentiate this quantity and set the result equal to zero. But remember that our load impedance is composed of a resistance and a reactance. So when we turn the knob to change Z sub L, what we really are doing is we have two knobs. We can change the resistance part of Z sub L, and we can change the reactance part of Z sub L. So I have two numbers, R sub L and X sub L, that I'm looking for. And I want to choose R sub L and X sub L so that my average power, my real power, is maximized. So how do we do that? Well, we need to take this real power and differentiate it. But we need to differentiate it with respect to two different variables. We're going to differentiate the real power with respect to R sub L and then differentiate it with respect to X sub L, set them both equal to zero, and we've got to solve both of those constraints simultaneously. So to differentiate this, you may want to remember that the derivative of a, of a quotient like this is the denominator times the derivative of the numerator plus the numerator times the derivative of the denominator over the denominator squared. So go back and review your calculus. And when you take the derivative, in this case it's the partial derivative of the real power with respect to the resistance, you'll get this expression. And when you take the real power and differentiate it with respect to the reactants, you'll get this expression. And both of those need to be equal to zero. And so now we have this system of equations. These are two constraints that we must satisfy simultaneously. And so in order to simplify this a bit, really we want this numerator part equal to zero. So if you just multiply that out and collect like terms and set it equal to zero, you will eventually end up with this constraint after some algebra. And we find out the requirements on R sub L is the square root of RTH squared plus quantity X sub L plus XTH squared. And then the second term, set this, the numerator here, equal to zero and rearrange, and you'll find this constraint. And so both of these two constraints must be satisfied simultaneously. And if you take the second expression and plug it into the first, you will end up with the fact that R sub L needs to equal RTH and X sub L needs to equal negative XTH. And so if you look at those two constraints, which have to be satisfied simultaneously and combine them together, what it, it means is, is that the load impedance has to equal the Thevenin impedance conjugate. So if we're given this scenario, and this scenario can occur whenever because Thevenin said we can always make a little a circuit that's inside the dash box, I can get maximum power, maximum real power in my load when I have Z sub L, I choose my load impedance equal to my Thevenin impedance conjugate. So this is the re this is the relationship will tell you when you can get maximum power into your load. Let's do an example. So here we have the circuit on the left, uh, 10 ohms and 40 microfarads, and we're operating at a frequency of 398 hertz. And the question is, what value of Z sub L can I attach to this circuit and absorb maximum real power, maximum real power? And so whenever we, we know that what we need is, I need to figure out what is the Thevenin circuit that's driving my load. And you see it over here on the left. If I can figure this out, then I'm, I know what I'm looking for is I'm looking for Z sub L equals ZTH conjugate. So if I can find this value, take the conjugate of it, that's the value Z sub L that I need. So how do we find the Thevenin equivalent circuit? Well, we need to find 
VOC and we need to find ISC. And before we get started, we need to figure out what frequency you're operating at. Omega is 2 pi F. We're told that F is 398 hertz, and so that, that's going to work out to be 2,500 radians per second. So if you were to take 2,500 radians per second, we have a 40 microfarad capacitor. That works out to be negative J10 ohms. And so we need to find VOC. VOC is found by opening this circuit and find the voltage that results. Well, we have 10 angle 0 as the voltage source. The volt VOC is the voltage across the capacitor, that simple voltage division. And so that's minus J10. And then the total is 10 minus J10. And if you do this arithmetic, you'll discover that VOC is 5 minus J5 excuse me, volts. Well, VOC is V Thevenin, so this should be 5 minus J5 volts. Now I need to find I short circuit. How do you find I short circuit? I short circuit is found by shorting out your load and finding the current that results. When I short out the load, there's going to be no current right there. It's all going to go through the load, and so I short circuit is going to be the 10 volt, 10, which is 10 angle 0 volts. None of it goes through the capacitor, so the resistance is for the to determine the current is going to be 10 ohms, and that's going to be 1 angle 0 amps. And of course, Z Thevenin is the V open circuit phaser over the I short circuit phaser, and so we have 5 minus J5 volts, 1 angle 0 amps and we're left with 5 minus J5 ohms. So this is 5 minus J5 ohms. So what Z sub L do we need? Well we have the answer we because we know that the impedance Z sub L that absorbs maximum possible power so we need ZL to be equal to ZTH conjugate and that is going to be 5 plus J5 Ohm. So if we put 5 plus J5 ohms, then this load right here will absorb maximum real power. The question is, what is that maximum power? Well, let's find that just to practice. We know that average power is VRMS IRMS cosine of theta minus phi. So I need to find the voltage across my load, so I'm looking for this voltage, V sub L, I'm looking for this current, and of course to go along with those I need the thetas and the phi. All right. So what is the current that flows in the resulting circuit? Well, the voltage is 5 minus J5 volt, that's the Thevenin voltage. Now we have 5 minus J5 in series with 5 plus J5, and so the combination of those is simply going to be 10 ohms, and so the current that flows is going to be the square root of 2 over 2 angle minus 45 degrees after you do the arithmetic, that amps. And then if I want to find the voltage V sub L, we got voltage division, 5 minus J5 is 5 square root of 2 angle minus 45 degrees volts. Voltage division, I'm looking for the voltage across 5 plus J5, 5 square root of 2 angle plus 45 degrees ohms, and the total is the sum of those two, which again is 10 ohms, and once you do that arithmetic, you'll find it's 5 square root of 2 over 2 angle 0 degrees volts. So now we have the current that flows through our maximum power load. We have the voltage across our maximum power load. So now we can find our V load max our maximum power max for our load, and that's going to be VRMS, which is 5 square root of 2 over 2, times IRMS, square root of 2 over 2, cosine of theta, theta 0, minus phi. And when you do the arithmetic, you'll find the maximum power that we can get into our load is 5 square root of 2 over 4 watts.
All right, so that was a problem that we've worked. So in summary, maximum real power transfer occurs when we have a load impedance which is equal to the Thevenin impedance conjugate. And so Thevenin says that, remember Thevenin says that any linear circuit can be represented as a voltage source in series with an impedance. So we have a VTH in series with ZTH. And if I were to choose Z sub L to be ZTH conjugate, then this impedance will absorb maximum real power. And likewise, if you were to do a Norton case, Z Thevenin and Z Norton are the same, ZL equals Z Norton conjugate would also work. And if you kind of look at what's going on here, you can, you can kind of see some insight. Since ZTH and ZL are conjugates of each other, remember this is, we'll call it Z, uh, excuse me, RTH plus, uh, plus J XTH, then we know this is going to be RTH minus JXTH. And so if you were to look at the impedance seen by the voltage source, you'll see that this reactance and this reactance cancel, and the voltage source only sees a resistance. In fact, it sees two times RTH. So the voltage source is only providing real power because it only sees pure resistance. So in this particular case, since we have a negative reactance for our load, our load is generating reactance and it's being absorbed by the Thevenin impedance. If you have the case more of like a motor, a motor would have a positive reactance in the load, in which case this becomes a negative reactance. In that case, your load, your motor, needs to absorb reactive power, which is being provided by the Thevenin impedance. And so maximum power occurs when the voltage source is only providing real power. Half of it goes to the resistance in the Thevenin impedance. Half of it goes into the resistance of the load. And then any reactive power needed between the two is provided by the other one. So kind of an interesting scenario there. So the main thing to walk away with when someone says maximum real power transfer in AC sinusoidal circuits, you need to choose your load impedance to be equal to the conjugate of the Thevenin impedance. Maximum power means you've got to compute a Thevenin equivalent circuit. In this case, Z sub L equals ZTH conjugate. This doesn't disrupt or, or contradict what we learned earlier. In an earlier case, back in the DC case, we saw that maximum power occurred when R sub L equals RTH. Well, that was for DC circuits. In DC circuits, we had nothing but resistance. There was no reactance. If there is no reactance, ZL equals ZTH means the same thing if the reactance is zero. So earlier we didn't derive something that was worthless, we just had the case of a purely resistive impedance. So now this is the true story. We have resistance and reactance. ZL equals ZTH conjugate.